Hey guys, this is Shannon with Nearly Organic Noshing, and I was invited to make a meal for the Frugal Family Food Collaboration. And today I am going to make a spaghetti squash carbonara. Um, it's a healthy meal um, if you're low carbing. It's a very low carb meal, and I will try and post the ingredients and the calorie breakdown at the end of the video. Um, it's super simple. All of my meals that I make usually take 30 minutes or less, and then I'm probably going to make just a couple of sides to go with it. I believe I'm going to make a Waldorf salad and maybe some carrots and parsnips. So, and I am not big on following recipes exactly, but for this one, I'm going to do my best to follow along with the recipe that's posted. I did find it on Pinterest, and I tend to be one of those just cook as I go, um, I make things up as I go, not follow a recipe. For me, a recipe is um, a suggestion, not exactly what I need to follow. But for this, I'm going to definitely try and follow the recipe so that you guys can follow along and make the exact same thing. So I'll go ahead and uh, flip the camera and get started on the spaghetti squash carbonara that I do when I'm trying to follow a recipe step by step um, is I use a dry erase marker and I write the recipe down or at least all the ingredients on my center island so that I can follow them step by step and mark off um, as I go or I just you know I have it for reference there um, and I write down the temperature and for how long I need to bake it at so my recipe is here and the first thing I need to do is I take a spaghetti squash and I am going to cut it in half, which I think I'm going to get a bigger knife than this one. Probably make it a little bit easier. And the recipe calls for baking it in the oven. Um, I don't do that. I do it in the microwave just because it's so much faster to do it in the microwave and I don't have to wait as long. You have to cook it for like 45 minutes in the um, oven to get it soft enough and, and honestly I just don't have time for that. So I just cut off the ends just to make it a little easier and then I'm going to scoop out the insides and so that it will sit flat on the plate. Um, if you just take the rounded edge on the back and cut yourself a, a flat section like this, it will sit flat and not rock and then when you fill it with water the water will stay in and as it's going around it won't rock in the microwave and the water will spill out so um, I just go ahead and cut that off and I'll cut that one off and then scoop out the insides. And all you really need to do is just scoop it enough that you get all the seeds out. And then of course, um, all the inside scrapings and the seeds. Um, I may save these seeds and dry them out, but um, the scrapings at least from the inside and the scraps, those are gonna go all to the chickens. Um, all of my peels today and everything will will all go to the chickens. I'll put it in the chicken scrap bucket and, uh, and they will have a nice treat for in the morning. So there it is. My squash is scraped out and I'm going to fill it with water and cook it in the microwave until it's soft. Okay, the next step of the video calls for eight ounces of bacon. This is a 16 ounce package. So I'm going to um, I'm going to cook the whole thing, but I'm only going to use half in the recipe, uh, and then I'll just save the rest of the bacon um, to do for breakfast or something like that this week. But it calls for dicing it. Um, I don't cut the bacon up too small. Um, I just go ahead and, and cut it into into small pieces because once it cooks, uh, it is going to shrink some, and then once you drain it you can just crumble it up if it is uh, a little bit too big but it calls for diced bacon and this is what I consider diced like I said I just chop them up once it's cooked you can crumble it down more if you'd like so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go ahead and get all the rest of this bacon cut up put it into my cast iron skillet and get it browned 
Okay, the spaghetti squash is cooking in the microwave and the bacon is browning on the stove. And while that is all cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and just dice up an onion. And so it'll be ready as soon as the bacon uh, is finished in the skillet, then I can brown this up. Just put all this into my scrap bucket. And this is a Vidalia onion. Uh, it did not specify what style onion you needed, but um, I just like a sweeter onion, so this is a Vidalia. Okay, I have the onions uh, cooking now. I've already taken the bacon out and it is draining. The onions are in cooking and I'm gonna go ahead and make like the filling. Um, it calls for four eggs. And these are eggs uh, from my chickens, so this is not something that we had to purchase. And it just calls for four large eggs. And just beat those. And added to that is going to be one cup of Parmesan cheese. Blend that together. And a half a cup of ricotta cheese. And blend that. and then one teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of pepper. Um, this is blended. I'm going to check on the onions and see how well they're cooked and if they are ready to have this incorporated into it. The onions are still cooking and while they are finishing up, the uh, spaghetti squash has finished. Uh, I believe I cooked this a total of like 13 minutes um, and it just comes apart, comes right out of the shell really easy. So I'm just going to go ahead and scrape this out and um, get it all ready to go into the pan. And then I save all the peel for the chickens. Okay, I have my spaghetti squash all peeled and shredded. And then this is my ricotta, parmesan, egg, salt, and pepper mixture. And it's all ready to go. Um, I have cranked the heat back up on the cast iron skillet and I'm going to pour this in. I'm going to add the bacon back in with the onions and then I'm going to add uh, the spaghetti squash in and mix it all together. Okay, I've incorporated everything in together and the recipe calls for taking a casserole dish and transferring everything to a casserole dish and putting it in the oven. Um, I don't want to have to wash extra dishes, so I'm just going to cook it in my cast iron skillet. It calls for 375 for 45 minutes. Um, I'm doing this in a convection toaster oven, and it saves on electricity and it does not heat the kitchen up so bad. So um, it'll probably only take me maybe 30 minutes, if that. And the recipe calls for one more cup of Parmesan cheese just to sprinkle on the top before you put it in the oven. 
So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm just going to add the last of the uh, quarter cup of Parmesan cheese and I'm going to pop it in the oven and let it cook until it is golden brown. As a side to the spaghetti squash carbonara, I am just going to take some parsnips and some carrots. I'm going to uh, cut them up into um, probably about a little bigger than matchstick size pieces. Toss them with some olive oil, rosemary, thyme, salt, uh, maybe a little pepper, probably some garlic and onion. Just season them really well. Toss them in with the vegetable oil. Lay them out on a sheet pan and I'm going to cook them until they're crispy right along with the spaghetti squash. Okay, this is everything complete. The spaghetti squash is out of the oven. It's all toasted up. This is the carrots and the parsnips and they are browned up. We like them really, really dark and crispy. Um, you guys might not wanna cook them as long as we do, but we like them dark and crispy. And this is the salad, the apples and the pecans um, and celery and everything all mixed up together and I will plate it up and show you guys what it all looks like uh, all together. Okay guys, this is everything all plated up. Um, you can see that the spaghetti squash, if you can see that in there, um, it's all baked. It's just like a little casserole. It comes out of the pan really easy. Um, and the salad is something cool. The carrots and parsnips are savory, and this is a pretty low carb meal except for the apples and the raisins. Those are the only higher carb um, items in this meal, which I'm okay with that because it is a fruit. It's not just added sugar or flour or something like that. So this is what we're having for dinner tonight. Um, I would estimate that this entire meal cost maybe around 12 bucks. Um, and it's going to have, um, it'll serve two, two meals. So we'll have it for dinner tonight and then we'll definitely have it for leftovers one night this week. There's plenty. So uh, this is a frugal, it is a healthy meal and I hope you guys enjoy. One last thing before I wrap this video up, I wanted to say thank you to Tangi, the caver's wife and the Fundamental Homestead for inviting me to be a part of the frugal family food collaboration. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and I appreciate all comments and feedback. I'm pretty new to the whole YouTube thing, so any comments or feedback that I get, whether it's positive or negative, really do help me. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and that you enjoy the recipe. 
And don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Thanks. This is Shannon with Nearly Organic Noshing.